Hey everyone, in today's video, we're going to learn how we can create an accordion for Power Apps Gallery. Now, if you are wondering what is accordion is, let me show you. So this is a simple app that I have created. This app is to track all the different work progress item. And as you can see here in, in this app, I'm seeing all the different work item that my team or I'm working with the title and the status. Now, if you notice in this app, I'm not showing the full detail of each item. Instead, I'm just showing the title and the status. And when I click on any of these items, I can expand the detail. And now I'm seeing all of the detail related to this particular item. I can see status, who it assigned to, any document this work item has associated with. I can click on any of the item and see the details. So this is the accordion, or you can call the expand collapse behavior inside a gallery. Not only that, if you notice, these documents are actually coming from a different document library. So with this approach that I'm going to show you, you can not only have this accordion behavior in your gallery, but you can also have a gallery inside a gallery. This is very useful when you have a lot of item in your gallery, plus you want to display a lot of information about that item. So if I expand all of them together, I have to scroll all the way down to see any item that is not displayed. So the more item it's going to be, the more scrolling I have to do to get to the item that I'm looking for. So instead of that, I can use this accordion behavior, easily see all item, and then whichever item I like to get more detail, I can click on that. So if you are interested on building something like this stay tuned because we are going to build this together hello everyone this is Deepak Srivastav and welcome to my channel so in today's video we're gonna learn how we can create an accordion for power apps gallery so first thing first, uh, we're going to start logging into Power Apps and I'm going to start creating a empty app. So starting from the blank, give a name and click create. So my app is created. Now let's understand the data that I'm using for this app. So I have this SharePoint site where I have created one work progress tracker list. And as you can see here in this list, I have a lot of work progress item with some columns like categories, status, due date. I also have another library that I've created. It's calling work progress documents. And this library is actually uh, storing the document and it has a lookup column that is looking up to the title of my work progress tracker list. So I can upload a document here, associate that document with the work progress tracker list. Okay, wonderful. So that's the setup. You can use your own setup for this purpose. First thing that we need to do, we need to connect to the data. So I'm gonna create a connection. Look for your SharePoint site. And my list is work progress tracker and work progress documents. So I have both uh, connection created. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to add a gallery. So this is the first point that you need to understand. Because we are creating this expand collapse behavior, we need to select a flexible height gallery. And the reason why we are selecting the flexible height gallery, because this is going to allow us to auto adjust the height. So when you are not showing any item, it will automatically adjust the gallery height. So select that. And this gallery will connect it to my work issue tracker list. So select that as a data source. And then from the layout, what I'm gonna select, I'm gonna select the news feed template. Okay, I just added this header. Now in the gallery, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add some more field here. So maybe this can be the status. And what we need to do the next, uh, I'm going to insert a button. So I added this button and I made sure that this button width is going to be the parent dot width. Okay, so just make sure that width of your button that you've added is the same as the gallery width okay and the title for this button is going to be this item dot title okay 
So we added the button. Let's make the image is equal to this item dot assigned to dot picture. So it will display the picture of the person who it assigned to. Now a little bit styling of this button. So as you can see here, it has a property called border radius. Make it zero. So it will become a proper rectangle button like this. Right? So you can see the button is proper rectangle. So we done the half part. We added the button and we have our gallery item. Now somehow we need to make sure that uh, when you when you click on these button, then only this information display. If it is not, then just don't show that information. Okay. So how you can do that. So for that, what I'm going to do, go to the button on select property. And we are going to set a variable. And the information that's going into this variable is going to be this item dot ID. Correct. So whenever I'm going to click on these button, what whichever item I'm on at that point of time, this variable will have the ID for that item. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to use that variable and select all these different control that I have for this gallery and visible property of that. I'm going to say if that variable is equal to this item dot ID, then true else false. Pretty straightforward, right? And as you can see here, as soon as we applied that logic, all of these different templates are now just showing the button. They are not showing any of this information. Now, if I run this and if you click, and as you can see here, your accordion is almost there. If you click on something, like let's say I open the second item, but if you click it again, nothing gonna happen. So let's say I want to add that logic. If I'm clicking on it first time, it should expand. If I click it again, it should collapse. So for that, what you need to do, go to the, the on select property of button and we're going to add another logic here. We will say if the variable that we have equals to this item dot ID, then set this variable equals to zero. Else do the what we're doing before. OK, and then what next what we need to do, we need to again go to all these control that we have and here we're going to add another logic so what we're going to do we're going to change this if statement and we are going to use switch so switch variable show id if it is zero that means we don't want to show anything else if it is this item dot id then true now let's run that right if i click again it will show so now you have a full behavior of expand collapse. Now let's say we wanted to show user also that uh, some sort of indication as you have seen in my app previously, this plus icon. So when I'm clicking it, the plus becoming minus. Okay, so how you can do that? It's very simple. Okay, so I'm gonna select the button and from the icon set, what I'm gonna use, I'm going to use the expand collapse icon here. Okay, so zoom in and I'm gonna just copy it again. Okay? And this time I will change it to zoom out, right? Now, the logic is very similar. We're just gonna, going to use the same switch logic here. So the logic is going to be, so we're gonna say if it is zero, that means nothing is display. So it's, gonna, it's going to be hidden, okay? And on the zoom in, we are going to use the same logic, but in reverse order. So in this case, it's going to should be true. And here it should be false. Right. So because if the item is already expanded or you can see the I see the detail about the template, then it should not be displayed. If you're not seeing it, then it should be displayed. OK. And for uh, another one. So the default. Right. So the default should be for the zoom out. Default should be the false. We don't need to show by default the zoom out for zoom in. It should be true. Now let's play that. So you can see uh, whichever item you click, it will become the minus and then other will be the positive. Pretty straightforward, correct? Okay, so now let's say you wanted to add a gallery inside each of these item in this gallery, like I have in my app where I was showing all the document. So how you can do that, right? So first thing first, let me expand the size of this template. 
And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to select any of these labels here and going to insert. Again, we are going to use the flexible height gallery. Okay, click. This time I'm going to display all the documents. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to use the news feed again. Resize this gallery a little bit so that it can fit correctly inside my gallery. Expand it. Do some resizing. Okay, so my gallery is here and now you can see it's showing some information. But what is that information is? So for the image, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say this item dot thumbnail. So thumbnail is going to give me uh, a thumbnail image for the document that this document library is having right now. And I'm going to use a small. And as you can see here, all of these different documents are start displaying. And what I'm going to show here, I'm going to show modified by, or maybe the name with extension. Okay, so that's the name of the item. Okay, another label here, and then I'm going to use this label to show when the document was modified. Perfect, right? Now, because we are showing this gallery inside a particular item from the parent gallery, so we need to filter this document library, so only related document displayed. So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the gallery in the items, we are, we are going to use the filter. So filter this uh, document. So this is my document library and I have a work item column that is displaying the title. You can create the lookup for ID or for the title or for any column that you are trying to create a relationship between these two list or library. I'm using the title. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say the work item, that's the column name, right? Dot value so the value will give me the actual title of this item equals to this item the title now this item is the current item from my parent gallery okay and i'll do the filter so now what's going to happen now i will see the only documents associated with the particular line item now if you notice if i play this app you see our accordion is not working anymore. And the reason for that, because we are using flexible height gallery, any of the control inside the flexible height gallery, if it is visible, the gallery itself is gonna adjust its height and start showing it. And because we added this gallery here, but we have not applied the visible logic as we are applying for other controls. So we are just going to copy that and apply the same logic for this entire gallery. And another thing that we can do, we can do this, the source scroll bar to disable for both the gallery, okay? Now, if I play my app, you can see, I can click on any of the item, and if the item doesn't have any document, it won't show it. Still, if you notice, the height, somehow it's not working correctly. So let me show you the reason and how we can fix that. Okay, so to fix that issue, the first thing that we need to do, we need to come to the template size and set it to, let's say 120, right? And then the height of this gallery is going to be count row, all item in this uh, list into the template height. So this way we can dynamically calculate the height. Now, if I run this app, and as you can see, it is showing me all the documents and if it doesn't have any document it is not showing me and the height of the gallery and the expand collapse behavior is working as expected uh, if you notice in my app i also had this quick toggle by click on that i was making either all expand or all collapse so how you can implement something like that so for that i need to insert a toggle and on this control, what I'm going to do on check, I'm going to set the variable that we are using called variable show ID to minus one. And when I'm unchecking it, I will set this to zero. Okay, so that's good. And now the only thing that we need to do, we need to select these controls that we have. 
go to visible property and you remember we have the switch so if it is zero that is false so everything is going to be collapsed if it is equal to this item id then true i'm going to add one more if it is minus one then also true okay very simple so if it is minus one expand everything now let's see it is working and if I turn back this off, everything is collapsed. Wonderful. So yeah, so that was the quick walkthrough of how you can create this accordion behavior in your gallery. I also like to show you one sneak peek of my next video that I'm going to show you. So if you notice in my uh, app, I had this edit icon. So let's say I'm seeing this work progress item, but I like to make changes to it. So when I click on the edit, it will take me to another screen where I'm seeing the form, right? So form associated with my work progress tracker. But in the form also, you can have the accordion behavior as we were seeing in the gallery. So stay tuned for the next video on the series because next video I will show you how you can create the accordion in the Power Apps form control. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching and uh, leave a comment if you have any question and keep learning and keep sharing. Thank you.